So this one's pretty cool. Let me set this one down to zero. So what this one does I'm telling it this first piece is exactly the same so if we look at everything up to here So this is what I would want you guys to do for your homework. So let's say this is your finished definition, you're happy with it. I want you to go ahead and start doing this. So you can grab this guy and you can type scribble. And here we can label this. So this is the surface. So this we can call it your target surface. And then you grab that, and you grab this guy, you select both, and then you tell it, you click in space, or you hit the space bar and you group them. So now we can put those together. Here we scribble. Also, if you notice down here, this always changes. That's kind of like your latest commands. So you can always look down if it's one you recently did. You can click that, and it will do this for you. So this was the like original panel. So I'm showing this will be pretty much the same thing as last week's where this is subdividing and paneling and our panel is the panel that I gave it. I morphed it onto there so it's just right now it's just square like like that guy so it looks just like a normal panel here we can grab all of these guys Maybe these ones we move together. And we say this one is paneling. Oops. If you want to change the color, the shape, you can do that. And you get like these weird little amoeba shapes, or you can get like that. You can do them however you want, and you can change the color if you right-click to color, and then you go, you drag this around, you grab the edge. That lets you do different colors. And then all of these guys I want to group together. So all I'm doing right now is organizing this into like the, the big basically like big chunks as to what's doing what. And then these ones are 
let's say these are morphing panels. Equip those guys. And these are going to be rotating panels. Which just would be better if you spelled it right. So now, what this does, which is pretty cool, is I told it to evaluate each box because if I just tell it to rotate, if I preview this, that's all the boxes, right? So let me turn off this one for now. So here are my boxes, right? I want to rotate them. So first what I want to do is rotate them along their plane. And then what I'm going to want to do is slowly rotate them along so that they start off not rotated, but as they move, they'll slowly start to rotate. And we get this really cool kind of like effect. So if I just type in rotate, We can grab the geometry we want to rotate, which is all these panels, right? But see, look, they're all just rotating, like the whole thing. That's not what I want. So the center, if I try and do this, it's going to fail, right? And so you can do this different ways. Um, the easiest way is you can grab, instead of using that rotate, we use rotate like that around in a plane the plane you can get from the actual panel if you don't define that it's going to use the standard plane so if we do this and then the angle you need a slider let's just try 50 what's this one put that to degrees but notice how this is rotating all of them because it's rotating all about the like origin point because that's the act the plane that it has by default I need to somehow identify the plane of each panel so to do that we use this one called evaluate box which the box that we get is all of these See, that gives you all these different things. And our output is a plane. So the plane that it gives you, let's see if you can see that. I need to turn this one off. But each panel, there you go, see? It has a little plane about its center point. So I can use that. And now when I zoom out, I grab my rotate and start giving it some rotation. Every panel will rotate in position. So that's kind of cool, right? But now it just looks like I twisted all my panels. So if I wanted not to just apply the same rotation to every panel, I can start to apply a series like we did before so that it steps up, right? So the first panel gets, let's say, like one degree. The next one might get three degrees, the next one six. So if you imagine that across a lot of things, that will slowly start to rotate it a lot and gets really interesting. So 
this is the kind of logic I want you guys thinking about is okay I have a set of data how do I now start transforming it in a way that m takes advantage of what I can do with grasshopper and parametric modeling because that lets you really start to explore things that you would never be able to model by hand or at least not quickly or in a way that you would easily be able to change it so the key here is not the plane we don't need to change the plane the plane is correct we need now to change this the angle so if you look here I created a series and then the step I give it as the the how we control it right the angle and then the count I told it use the list length so that is coming out of how many segments we actually made does that make sense so here this one is how many we actually have how many panels if I plug this in here so let's grab let's just move this guy way down I'm trying to recreate this well actually I don't need to I could at this point delete that guy and basically just turn this one on So now what it's doing is it's pulling how many panels we have that becomes the count to how many times we're going to rotate and then the amount it's going to step will be here so based off of this so watch what happens to our panels I'm going to try and get this in a way that you can see it it's easiest to notice it from above And as you start to increase this, notice how the first panels aren't rotating that much, whereas you get to the right and these ones are rotating a lot. So the way this is running through, it's starting to really distort those panels as opposed to the other ones. And that's because we gave it a step. So it's going to count them through and start to rotate them. If I had instead used an attractor to, d to decide that angle, then you could measure the distance to the center point of the panel and then use that as somehow a factor of the angle of rotation. So there's another way you could do it or center point to a curve or cr the closest point of the center point of the panel to the closest point on the curve. That way you would get the attractor of the curve kind of like messing up the rotation. And there's all these different sort of things you could apply. Um, you could go like crazy with it if you want to do a lot. Um, you could do just barely any, so it's more kind of subtle. And there's all kinds of ways you can keep changing these. So, And once you have those, you can offset them, you can create a structure for it, you can analyze those, and then like create a like bracing for them. This just changes the color of your previews. So if you don't want to see like gray or red.
You guys have any questions so far? Does that make sense? 